so first of all what is it let's start with the very basics yes it's a comet we know that it's an interstellar comet it's come from another star system and the three i part of its name it means it's the third interstellar hence the i object that we've so far detected traveling through the so excuse me traveling through the solar system it's a, a remarkable discovery the atlas part of it comes from the atlas uh, telescope array in chile where it was uh, discovered and uh, there's a picture of the the atlas array in chile there uh, it's um it was spotted on the 1st of july 2025 and um it's the third interstellar visitor if you like after Oumuamua and Comet Borisov, which we've seen in recent years. And in case you're wondering what ATLAS stands for, it's the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, because of course it is. And uh, this was the, the array there, you can see on the right, that first detected it in July. Now, we know that this is an interstellar comet because of a few things. Firstly, the orbits of comets in the solar system are elliptical, as shown in the diagram at the top. But 3i Atlas has a very, very, very different trajectory. And it's a hyperbolic orbit. And you can see from this that it's a very different type of orbit to the orbits we see in comets that originate within the solar system or the Oort cloud brackets, if it, if it exists. Um, it's not gravitationally tied to our sun. And in fact, it's really sad, it's moving far too fast to be captured by the sun's gravity. So it's here today, gone tomorrow. Uh, it will leave the, the solar system and on to its next destination, uh, wherever that may be. It's not going to get any closer than 270 million kilometers from the Earth. So let's kill that bit of misinformation. It's not heading for our planet. It's not going to collide with the planet. Uh, we're perfectly safe from this comet, absolutely no threat whatsoever because it's not, as I said, going to be closer than 270 million kilometers. The closest approach to the sun is going to happen at the end of this month on the 29th inside the orbit of Mars. We've already, we saw last week the amazing images that uh, the Martian rover and uh, European spacecraft orbiting Mars have managed to get with the comet. A little bit indistinct, but as we said, the rover and the uh, the orbiting spacecraft around Mars are not designed to take photographs of objects like comets. So the fact that we've got anything is quite remarkable. And as I said, it's traveling at an amazing speed, 68 kilometers per second. This is one of the fastest visitors ever recorded. So it's not going to get captured by the sun's gravity. It's moving far too fast for that. As for its size and shape, well, estimates vary, but uh, between 0 0.3 and 5.6 kilometers across the size of the nucleus. But most likely, most astronomers seem to be agreeing now that it's actually under one kilometer across in size. The coma, this cloud of uh, gas and dust surrounding the comet, extends for 100,000 kilometers around the comet. And uh, the Hubble Space Telescope has captured stunning images revealing it's sort of got a distinctive teardrop shaped coma and uh, which obviously could be seen right across the the solar system this is uh, chemically very interesting it's very rich in carbon dioxide unusually rich in carbon dioxide which is what is distinguishing it from typical solar system comets this is how we know that it another way we know it, it isn't a solar system comet uh, it's got exotic elements, cyanide gas. Well, that's not unusual in comets. You may know the story that with the apparition of Halley's Comet in, in 1910, scientists said that they detected cyanide on the comet. Uh, the world panicked thinking that we were going to pass through its tail and everybody on the Earth was going to get gassed by the cyanide, which, of course, didn't happen. But a lot of people made money out of selling cyanide gas masks around the time of uh, the apparition in 1910. So there's no danger from that at all. But it also has atomic nickel vapor. And uh, again, this is not unknown in comets, but the actual ratio of uh, nickel to iron is actually quite high. So this again marks it out as something different from what we would normally expect to see in the solar system. It's the chemical 
fingerprint of an alien star system, not our own. It's got lots of water ice, of course, water vapor, carbon monoxide and carbonyl sulfide, key ingredients from wherever it was born. And we mentioned last week or the week before that uh, astronomers using data from Europe's Gaia probe have managed to trace its path back around the galaxy. And they believe that it's had uh, flybys like it's flying by our sun of around 62 stars. Uh, which they're fairly certain about. It could be as high as 93. So this thing is billions of years old. And for the last 10 million years, it's, uh, it's actually encountered uh, quite a few stars on its journey. It's not come particularly close to any of them because there's no indication that ultraviolet light from, uh, from a star has altered it chemically in any way. So this is sort of pristine material from billions of years ago. This is why it's so... Uh, interesting and um, at the moment it started doing this uh, well, what three or four days ago it was announced that it's outgassing a house with the pressure of a fire hose this is highly unusual behavior suggesting volatile rich composition maybe even some organics uh, thrown in there as well but this outgassing of massive quantities of water is is unusual and we don't see it in solar system comets as much. And this suggests that the comet actually originally formed in a cold, distant region of its original star system, and it's been preserved in deep freeze for billions of years. It's also generated something that's quite unusual. It's generated a tail facing forward towards the sun. Now, again, this is not unknown uh, in, in comets. If anybody remembers uh, Comet Aeron Roland in 1957, I don't personally remember it, of course, but that had a, a, what looked like a spike on the front of it, which was a tail, which is called, actually called the anti-tail, pointing at the sun. So uh, this is uh, it's actually not that difficult to explain. But what happens is because um, the comet pushes out large dust grains, which are too heavy and too dense to be swept away towards the back of the comet by solar radiation away from the sun. So these dust grains remain at the front of the sun. And um, that's where we, we get these, um, this anti-tail from. As you can see, uh, hopefully in these images, that there is a lot of dust in front of the comet, which is called the, the anti-tail. Although it's not that prominent, but it, it is there nonetheless. Now, um, what about its age and origin? Well, its estimated age is 7.6 billion years, 3 billion years older than our solar system. Uh, its gravitational interactions with giant planets or passing stars likely flung it from its home system into the interstellar void. This again is not unusual as we understand it. Whole planets could be ejected from their star systems by interactions with other, other planets. So star systems, especially in their youth, can be actually quite volatile with objects flying about all over the place. Um, but this was a an ejection from its star system and it's been wandering the galaxy for 7.6 billion years and we think that it came from either the thin or the thick disk regions of the galaxy so not from the galactic halo for example but from the actual disk of the galaxy is is where it's been wandering through uh, yet to be conclusively demonstrated but we think that's where where it was formed somewhere in the disk of the the Milky Way, and it's just pure chance that it's wandered into our solar system. Lots of international efforts. This is a truly international collaboration of astronomers, as astronomy is these days. And we had the Hubble Space Telescope looking at it, which captured detailed images of the nucleus. As we saw, orbiting spacecraft around Mars and the Perseverance Mars rover managed to image it. The James Webb Space Telescope has provided the infrared spectroscopy, revealing this unusual carbon dioxide rich composition. And uh, the, the observatories Swift and Sphere X have also done multi wavelength observations tracking its activity and composition. So, 
from now the comet is going to be temporarily unobservable as it goes behind the sun as seen from the earth but it's going to re-emerge in december uh, where there will be a lot more studies performed on it of course it will be further away from the sun then but uh, there will be a, a massive international effort in december to to find out more about this really intriguing orbit why does this comet matter so much well first of all it provides uh, rare direct evidence about how planetary systems form around distant stars a window into alien worlds we can't yet visit and i like the, the optimism of the word yet there <coughs> excuse me um we can do a comparative analysis comparing this comet to Oumuamua um, and a carbon monoxide rich comet Borisov, the second interstellar visitor in 2019, uh, and now 3i Atlas. So it's, it's quite interesting that Borisov was carbon monoxide rich and 3i Atlas is carbon dioxide rich, indicating different origins uh, for both of those comets. So very interesting to do an analysis when all the data's in. <coughs> excuse me um it, the comet really does challenge existing models of cometary activity we've never seen anything quite like this before uh and it does reveal the remarkable diversity <coughs> i'm so sorry uh created in different stellar environments so it is an indication of just how diverse these objects can be even though we know it's a comet it's not like anything we've seen before but you've got to remember it would be very strange indeed if it did resemble our solar system comets because it's formed in a completely different environment so you would naturally expect this comet to be different from anything that we have in the solar system so behind the sun now pops out again in december in march it crosses jupiter's orbit and uh, beyond well it's going to continue out of the solar system and we will lose it forever and we will never see it again and uh, and who knows how many billions of years in the future this comet has got ahead of it who knows how many more star systems uh, it's going to visit so it's quite a romantic thing i think this this comet it's a reminder that our solar system is just a little tiny 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 corner of the universe and uh, with a bit of luck we will get more visitors in the near future uh, Europe has suggested permanently stationing a spacecraft at either L1 or L2 to have it sitting there just waiting for another interstellar visitor which it can then go and intercept interesting idea it would be wonderful to have something on standby to be uh, sent towards uh, any interstellar visitor if it's you know the right distance and on the right trajectory of course but it's a it's an interesting idea and wouldn't be too expensive to 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 do so um you know this is all just a reminder of the incredible diversity uh, and environments of our galaxy so just in a nutshell what makes this comet so unusual first of all um the polarization sunlight reflected from the comet is polarized in a way that we haven't seen from a comet that's telling us something about its composition but um uh, and surface features but we don't know what that is yet um the the comet entered the solar system along the plane of the major planets so the ecliptic but uh, this is by chance um it's unusual but you know it's a coincidence uh, and obviously that's led to speculation that it's been sent here by aliens to visit uh, Jupiter and Mars and uh, etc etc but it's just ch pure chance I mean things happen by pure chance don't they just so happened that its trajectory is on along the plane of the solar system it's ejecting these huge amounts of water with the pressure of a fire hose um, which is indicative of its formation and composition it's got this high carbon dioxide um, to water ratio uh, higher than any solar system comet ever seen and that's telling us a lot about the environment it formed in probably beyond the carbon dioxide frost line of its uh, of its host system so way out in in the the outer reaches of a star system is probably where this comet formed 
Last week it did something a little bit bizarre. It changed its color. It was sort of whitish before. Now it's turning green, indicating chemical changes as the comet approaches the sun. And uh, we've never seen this before. We've never seen a comet change color in this way. Again, indicative of, of what's going on on the surface and its composition. Um, it hasn't developed a long tail. We saw uh, Roger's image of Comet Lemon earlier, that lovely long tail. Uh, so it hasn't developed a long tail, which is a little bit strange, but it has generated an anti-tail, uh, which is telling us something about its dust composition and the size of its dust grains. Uh, it's moving at an incredible speed, too fast for the sun's gravity to capture it. It is a temporary visitor. It's not going to hang around. And then just to finish, I just thought this, uh, just to show you how bad this misinformation has got about this comet uh, on the internet. On the left, some video titles that uh, I found on, on YouTube, and it's only a few of them. There are thousands, and a lot of them are being AI generated as well. James Webb just caught 3i Atlas moving faster than light. Uh, Voyager just caught 3i Atlas moving faster than the speed of light. So uh, alien spacecraft 3i Atlas could attack Earth in 2025, scientists warn. 3i Atlas fleet to harm or to save us. 3i Atlas loaded with toxic material. Uh, Michio Kako, um, well, I don't really want to talk about him because it will just make me a bit angry. But he's, uh, you know, he's he's an astrophysicist uh, who does remarkable work. But he's incredibly good at self-promotion. And uh, he loves stirring the pot, absolutely adores it. And he's now claiming that nine hidden objects have been discovered escorting the comet. All of this is complete nonsense, of course. Nothing can travel faster than light. It's the, uh, the comet's not loaded with toxic material. It contains cyanide on its surface. Um, but that's it. And uh, even if its tail were made or completely of cyanide, and even if the Earth passed through the tail, the tail would be so tenuous that you might get one molecule per thousand square miles or something ridiculous like that. So that's ridiculous. Uh, it's not going to attack the Earth. There's no fleet and so on. But there are literally thousands of these videos being churned out. And a lot of people are watching them. It must be said they are getting really good numbers of views, much better than we get, which is a bit depressing, really, because we do have the <laughs> facts about the universe. Uh, now, some of, these, some of these videos are getting up to nearly a million views on YouTube. I was having a look. I was absolutely shocked. Um, and uh, it's it's just a shame that people don't study the the science as I've just been talking to you about, and will prefer to watch sensationalist uh, nonsense. Um, but we we persevere here at Space Oddities. We do what we can, our own little bit of our own little oasis of truth, um, and uh, and there we are. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's all about the comet. We hope you're armed now with the facts to fend off anybody. Uh, coming up with this uh, this misinformation, and uh, and there you are. So that's Comet Three I Atlas. We will no doubt talk about it again in December when it reappears from behind the sun, and we will keep you posted if there's anything new that uh, we learn about it uh, before then. <laughs>